Hello, welcome. This is now question two for LXL's M1 uh, June 2015 paper. Um, now, this bit here we're talking, um, we're talking about using Subak, which is basically um, throwing a ball up from what we assume to be the ground. So someone's actually gone to the ground and managed to throw it up, uh, demonstrate something you can't see. Uh, obviously, you know what the ground is, I don't know why I did that. Um, I've drawn this line on that says 14.7 metres and two points where it passes through this 14.7 metres. Now it goes in the curve because in reality it's not going to do that. Um, well, you know, it does, but we're assuming we're throwing it in this kind of manner. Okay, so that the sort of side on, really. Um, anyway, so that's for a later question, but that's essentially what it does. And um, the first question is quite a nice one. Um, so we're told the initial speed is projected upwards uh, from a point O, sorry, so that's not necessarily the ground, um, uh, with a speed of 19.6 metres per second, so U is equal to 19.6 metres per second. So this whole escapade of questions uh, is just see that. So um, speed of 19.6, now when it's thrown up, the clearly uh, things should be sprouting out in your head, uh, straight away, but when it's to do up, when it's being thrown up or falling down, we use acceleration to be 9.8. Now, whether it's positive or negative dictates um, whether it's been thrown up or uh, dropped, thrown down, whatever. Uh, so, because it's being thrown up, we say the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, if you are just just a side note, really, if you are genuinely interested in how is it 9.8 meters per second? Um, I'll have a look at my uh, A2 physics videos, um, and there should be a bit on there that actually explains how we get 9.8. And you can get it more accurate than that, but for M1, it's all you need to know. Anyway, modeling the stone as a particle, which you generally always do, uh, find the greatest height above O reached by the stone. Now, we can add another thing to that. Because it's the greatest height, if it's still travelling upwards at a speed, then it's still going to be gaining height. So therefore the highest point it will reach is when the speed is zero, the final speed is zero. Okay. So V is equal to zero metres per second. Okay, so we've got them and we want to know the height. In other words, we want to know the distance. Okay. So we've got V, U, A and S, or U, A, V and S. Try to put it in the first way, uh, possibly, um, an equation. Okay, so I'll see about equations. So ones that involve V, uh, U, and A, and S. Well, it'd be V equals U plus AT, but we don't know what T is and we're not bothered about T. Um, well, you could. You could do V equals U plus AT, work out what T is, and then use that value in S equals a half of U plus V times T to get the distance. But a much more simple way of doing it is saying, using the equation V squared equals U squared plus 2AS. Now, you know is obviously take 2as, but that's the proper equation. Uh, obviously, v squared is going to be 0 uh, meters per second equals u squared, which is 19.6 meters per second squared plus 2 times, or you could just take 2 times 9 point, negative 9.8 meters per second squared times the distance s, which we don't know yet. Um, and then what you're going to do is uh, just rearrange this so you can put move the 2 times 9, negative 9.8 times s to the other side to make it positive. Um, so if we do that, so therefore 19.6 squared, um, it comes to 384.16 metres per second squared. So 384.16 metres per second squared is equal to 2 times 9, negative 9.8, which is so negative 9.6 metres per second squared times s, rearrange that to get s, so we get s as being 19.6 metres. Okay, so for the highest distance it reaches, above L is 19.6 metres. Okay, um, now this part B, oh, excuse me, uh, part B is why you've drawn this graph here. So part B states, um, find the length of time for which uh, the stone, the thing we throw in that red um, di in that red diagram over there, um, is above fourteen point seven meters. Sorry, this um, focus is really binding me up. 
just have a flick around with this one a second. Live thing, I can't be bothered redoing this video. Uh, you know, um, I mean, I'm more than welcome to, but I can't be bothered. Uh, so it's going to go out of focus for a second. I do apologise. Okay, there we are. Maybe this wasn't such a good edit. Um, is that any better? Yeah, I probably should have done this. There you go. Hopefully that's better. Um, okay, so what we've got to try and find is that the, the amount of time it's above 14.7 metres, so above this line. Now, what I first tried to do when I did this, when I tried to think of this, is go, okay, well, I know the greatest height it reaches is 19.6 uh, metres, so work out the time it takes to get to 19.6, work out the time it gets to take to 14.7, uh, take it away and then double it. Well, I got a bit of a problem with that um, because I kept making a, a mistake. Although I'm sure you could do it that way. Um, and if you would like to send in your answers, I might have made a bit of a mistake when I did it. Uh, please feel more than welcome. So, if you were to go down that method, what you would do is you'd use the equation s equals a half of u plus v times t, assuming the deceleration is constant, which I've just seen it is. Um, I work out what t is for 19.6 meters. And then work out where it is for 14.7 meters, take it away and double it because obviously it's going to be going up to this point here and it's going to be going back down. So it's got sort of twice the distance here, it's got to go back up and down um, to the height. And then so it's got to go above 14.7 meters and then roll out down to 14.7 meters, okay? But as I said, that's just one way of doing it because it's going to be almost instant deceleration there, it's going the opposite way. Uh, or instant acceleration whatever. Right, um, so what we need to recap what we've got here. So we need the so what we're, it's, we're gonna be considering this whole journey of one um, for the first method. So what we've got is we've got a distance of 14.7 meters. Because that's the height we want to get to. Uh, our A hasn't changed, it's negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Uh, our u, well, that hasn't changed either. That is 19.6 meters per second squared. We don't want to faff around with v because we're considering the whole thing and we don't know what the nb is uh, and we want to know what t is. Okay, so what equations can we use that will give us um, a time for this? Well, there's a couple of things we need to consider, first of all. We've got two time periods here, so we need two values for t. Now, what equation, see that equation is only one, um, that contains S, U, A and T um, and allows us to get two values for T. Now, it might be not as straight away as you would think, but obviously T, when you square root something, giving it away, uh, you get two answers for something. So that's kind of the connection they're expecting you to make. Okay, so if you haven't got it by now, you probably won't do, um, is S equals U, T plus a half a t squared. Now it's obviously take half a t squared, but that'll happen when we put a to be ni negative 9.8 in. So what we do is sub in our numbers. So 14.7 meters is equal to ut, which is 19.6 meters per second, times t. Oh, uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, plus a half a t squared. And a being negative 9.8, so it's half negative half times 9.8 uh, times t squared. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, obviously you can change that to take 4.9 t squared. So set it right now again because I'm lazy. Um, it's going to be take 4.9 times t squared. Okay, because that's going to be half of uh, 9.8. So then what we do is um, We've almost got a CVAT equation here because we we don't know t, um, okay? And but generally, when you have a quadratic equation, you'll say uh, x and x squared, the likes. But we've got t and t squared and uh, a standard number there, so it's very similar uh, philosophy. So what we're going to do is make uh, is put uh, t squared as being positive. So we're going to move all this to the right hand side. So therefore, if we rearrange that. That gets us 4.9 t squared uh, 
t a 19.6 t or 19.6 times t um, plus 14.7 meters and obviously that's rest of it's meters per second that equals zero so what you say if this says 4.9 x squared take 19.6 x plus 14.7 um, you can ignore the meter thing if you want to you would solve that by well taking out 4.9 if you could which you can um, so if you were to take out 14.9 or 14 yeah 4.9 so 14.9 um, you should get an answer so it'd be 4.9 if you take that out it's a common factor t squared uh, take 40 uh, plus 3 is equal to 0 okay so that's just a case of factorizing this so therefore it's t in one bracket t in another bracket and it's t uh, take 3 take 1 okay so we've got a value of t being equal to 3 or t being equal to 1 okay so if t is equal to 3 that's obviously the second value for t which is this t2 so that says that equals 3 and t1 is equal to 1 now that's the time at each period where it passes now it goes up so when it passes through here it's at one second increase increase increasing and then when it gets here it's at three seconds so obviously the distance between them two is the time difference between one and three seconds which is two seconds obviously so therefore this whole bit here we can say is two seconds therefore t is above 4.7 meters for two seconds okay now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rub this little bit off the board and um, I'll show you the other way if, the, is, if it does work. Um, now we know the answers or if it doesn't work I can prove to you why it doesn't. Obviously I've tested this. Um, so anyway that's the correct answers to 2a and 2b. Um, I'm just going to, if you, this is, uh, now you can switch off but um, you know if well, I'm probably sure you have done. But I mean you know turn the computer off. Kind of, anyway um, that's only if you want to now we've gone through the main bits, uh, that's the official answer, um, that's in the mark scheme. Now what I'm going to try and do is try and show you another way um, why we do or why, why, why we can't, I haven't quite decided yet, because um, I need to obviously test it out. Okay, um, let's say that was all planned. So anyway, that, that's the correct answer, so thanks for watching, um, and if you want to switch off you can do, but we're just going to try something else, possibly. Right, so this is that other bit of um, question two that I thought I'd have a quick go at showing you why you can't do it, obviously. Um, now, what I did here was try and work out the time period to get to um, 19.6 metres, um, because obviously we said that was the uh, greatest height reached, which it was. Um, now, we, we can't do... Um, what I tried to do here is work out the time to get to 19.6 meters, which I, uh, using that equation, I said that was nine. It was two seconds. I don't think anything in my working is wrong there, um, because of the u, uh, the the velocity at this point I assume to be zero, which is um, probably where I went wrong. Uh, but this is obviously showing you why you can't do it this way. Um, and then I worked at the time period to get to 14.7 metres, obviously it's going to be less, that said 1.5 seconds, and obviously if you were to take them away you would get 0.5, which is totally and utterly incorrect, so that's incorrect, that's definitely wrong, um, but I've got it in blue just so you can tell this black is correct, um, but the reason, that, the reason we can't do it this way above all else, um, and I'll just prove it to you then obviously, is that this is necessarily not zero um, and if we were to use it that as zero so if it was which it isn't and then we go okay well then the next part u would be zero and it just causes all sorts of chaos and problems that's why we can't do it that way so hopefully that kind of explained um, a bit background why we have to do it assuming it's all kind of uh, like this so all one big event rather than splitting it up like we did over here into two separate ones okay so as i said hopefully that's made some kind of sense a little bit of additional uh talk in there okay so thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video